Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna make a feeder out of some pallet wood. Pallet wood that is not fumigated. Uh, thank you to the commenters that reminded me to make sure everyone knows all pallet wood is not the same. If you wanna look up good pallet wood versus bad pallet wood with regards to bees, um, there's some fumigation that happens on international uh, pallets. There's stamps specifically, there's a several stamps out there, but uh, just YouTube that uh, if you want more information on it. But this pallet wood is good and clean, and I've planed it down so it's nice and smooth. But all I'm doing is making a feeder that I can put outside on a tree. I'm going to tell you why here in a second. Um, and, and this is just simple you know, Legos, putting something together. I can give you the measurements for this. Um, and you might, you know, kind of say, well, this is kind of built for a, a hive top feeder. I'm just reusing the same stuff I've got. I've already got the lids with the holes. I've already got the jars. And I, if I want to put a feeder outside, uh, you know, I'm just going to use the same equipment. So just a quick specification, if you wanted to know, you know, the bottom is about six inches square with the hole not centered and the reason the hole is not centered is because when you put the back plate on it i want the jar centered uh in the middle there so just remember when you're putting this together the hole doesn't go directly in the center of this a back plate that's just the height of the board and then i made two squares uh cut them in half here for a little bit of support and i'll just nail this to the tree like this um with the jar in the middle like this Okay, so that's what I'm building here. Um, now, the reason I'm building it, and, I, and, I, and I'm gonna apologize because I'm probably putting di different segments together uh, because I'm noticing something in the apiary. Um, and, I, and I just wanna to talk about robbing and the dearth and when the dearth comes. Uh, so I'm gonna probably talk a little bit about that at the beginning of the video. This is more about building a feeder to do open feeding. All right, so, uh, if you got any questions, put them in the comments below. This is just a straight six inch square on the bottom. It's about eight inches on the top. Pallet wood that's about six inches wide. Uh, if you need exact measurements, then you're, you're trying too hard. This is just something so a jar fits in there. Hope you enjoyed it. I decided to give you the time lapse of the assembly. So uh, if you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm just gonna put it together real quick here. Okay, there's the quick assembly. Uh, probably uh, did that at about 800 speed. And now you see the jar goes right in there like that and it will attach to the tree just through a, a hole in the back and, and secured to a tree or a building or a structure just like that. Let me know if you got any questions. The next feeder I wanna show you, uh, just like the, uh, the open feeding uh, jar feeder is a, is a pollen feeder. There's a thousand ways of making this. Um, the two important considerations are keeping rain out and keeping it, you know, um, somewhere so the bees can go in and the pollen doesn't fall out. If you don't know what pollen substitute is, it looks like this. Uh, this stuff that I bought from Man Lake, you can, it's like flour. There's recipes you can make your own if you'd like. Um, you know, this stuff is pretty popular and, you know, as long as you put it into something that keeps it dry, I use these uh, resealable five gallon buckets with screw top lids. Um, and this is just a coffee can and I've taken the lid to create a little bit of a cap on it. Now, this was a little bit difficult to make, so I'm not saying this is the perfect solution, but the objective is hanging the coffee can in a way with a lip so that when it rains, this pollen that is like powder stays dry for as long as you possibly can. Now, open feeding pollen is another one of the best indicators of a pollen dearth. If they start taking this pollen, that means there's nothing natural or not enough natural to keep them uh, going to raise their young. So open feeding with pollen and with sugar water can give you a visual indication of when the dearth starts because if they start taking these, you kind of know something happened in your area and there's not enough natural resources. Let me know if you got any questions. All right, the next important point about where to put your feeders if you're doing open feeding is away from your apiary, away from your beehives, especially if you have young, smaller mating nukes or small nucleus colonies that are trying to get built up. 
And the reason is you don't want to promote any robbing. We're basically open feeding sugar water. And here's where I put the sugar water feeder. I chose to put it up here so that if it does drip, it's not gonna drip on the bark. One thing to consider. And high enough that I can just easily reach it without getting a ladder out. And then the pollen is just here, low, so I can change it easy. And if the bees are coming here, I'll, I'll be able to see it easy. But open feeding will attract other bees when they need these resources. You don't want that robbing to go back into your apiary. If they find a weak hive with some honey frames, they'll take it all. So this is where and how to put open feeding. Okay, YouTube, I'm coming at you a couple days later. So this is the result of my open feeding uh, here at the end of May. Um, the pollen feeder that I put out a few days ago does not have any bees coming towards it right now. So that's telling me with fresh pollen substitute out in an open pollen feeder that the bees have plenty of pollen coming in right now. And it, today is actually the 1st of June. Uh, 31st of May was yesterday. So the uh, end of May, beginning of June, looks like we have plenty of pollen coming in. But, look at what's going on at the sugar water feeder. This is telling me that the nectar flow has stopped right now. Now why? Weather, end of the season, trickling down, sugar water is better. If you put an open feeder out and the bees are going for the food like this, they are preferring sugar water over anything else that's available naturally. So this is uh, an indication that we're at the end of the uh, spring nectar flow here in zone 9B. So this is how you use feeders to use as indicators for your nectar flow and for your pollen flow. Um, don't put these feeders anywhere near your apiary, apiary because this will create robbing. And the reason I put these feeders out was because I thought I started to observe some robbing in one of my hives and I was like, I didn't think the flow was over. So I said, well, let me get my feeders up. And this is how you use a feeder to determine when the nectar flow starts and stops. Let me know if you got any questions below.